Hawkey's biggest crowd of the season, over three and a half thousand, knew that a win against Crewe would definitely save Torquay's league status. The last thing they wanted was for Crewe to go ahead, but this was a day for the unexpected. A free kick just outside the box, and Torquay keeper Kenny Allen was unsighted by his own wall. Bodak, the scorer. The crowd stunned by that, but worse was soon to come. A breakaway goal by Platt. That was the trigger for the lunatic element to vent their frustration. And after some ugly scenes, there were arrests. Just into the second half, and the interest revived on the pitch as Jim McNichol pulled one back from a free kick. followed a bizarre incident when Jim McNichol was bitten by a police dog as he went to take a throw in. The injury time which resulted gave United time for an equaliser. Bryn the police dog the provider, Paul Dobson the scorer. From then on, it was carnival time. The manager couldn't hide tears of joy, and Torquay went wild. What were your feelings two minutes from time? I, I, I'm afraid that I was really... That yes, I was crying my eyes out, I don't mind admitting. Because I couldn't. I'd already been told that Burnley was winning and Lincoln was winning, which uh, now I find out that Lincoln won winning, but... And we were... One goal down, and I thought, well, anyway, we've got to get one back. One goal back. And when Dobson scored that goal, well, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't really believe it. I've been coming up here now for something like 55 years, and I've never seen anything on plane more like I saw today. I've had some good times in my life as a player and as a manager. I had some very good successes. Uh, after one, you always say that, uh, well, that was great, that was my best, I suppose, really, although, you know, we've not really won anything. We've not won a cup or a championship, uh, but it seems that way today, and it obviously has got to be my best time in football, just knowing that we've survived, and when you survive, there's always a chance of doing better next year. The, the gaffer told me to just drift in. You know, I just plays a, a front man, and I just drifted in near the box, and the ball come across, and I just shaved my man off, and I just turned it. And as soon as it left my foot, I knew it was going the corner. Great scenes. Well, the hero of uh, the match at Playmore was almost the villain. He's just four years old, weighs 90 pounds, and as one player said today, when he tackles you, you stay tackled. Police dog Bryn was helping to control a mob of unruly fans when Torquay's Jim McNichol felt the full force of the law. Bryn snapped and the player went down with a gash in his thigh that needed 17 stitches. But it was a bite that helped Torquay stay in the football league. Today, the biter and the bit had a chance to meet on somewhat friendlier terms in Torquay. Bryn, the bad lad of the Devon and Cornwall police's dog section, wasn't looking as contrite as he should have been. He's had a ticking off from handler John Harris, and a report will have to be made to his superiors. But as far as Bryn was concerned, it was all in a day's work, saving Torquay United from the dreaded drop. It was instinct with the dog. The dog thought straight away that we were being attacked from behind, and he bit his leg. I got him off straight away as soon as I could, and unfortunately the damage had been done then. Bryn is being... Hailed as the, the dog that saved the football club. But he shouldn't have done what he did, should he? Well, uh, what happened shouldn't have happened, uh, particularly to one of the players. But uh, it, was, it was purely accidental the way it did happen. You know, it, was, uh, it wasn't the dog's fault that, uh, that he reacted the way he did. A somewhat sore Jim McNichol has been okayed by the doctors and came out to meet the police teeth that nearly dismissed him. They used to say that Norman Hunter bites your legs, but this is ridiculous. Jimmy, you seem extremely good friends with Bryn. 
Oh, well, I've got to know him quite well the last couple of days. <laughs> I'm sure you have. It's quite a tackle, wasn't it? Oh, the hardest one I've ever had, I think. What happened? What do you remember of it? Uh, I just remember clearing the ball onto the right touch line and uh, knocking it up the, up the line. And uh, I was watching the ball, next thing I knew, the dog was on me. You know, I, I didn't see him coming. I didn't, I didn't really know what was happening. Do you realise what he'd done? After a couple of seconds, I did, yeah. When I looked down and saw my shots were, were ripped and I saw the gash. In the yeah. It's pretty close to you becoming the only soprano footballer in the fourth <laughs> division, wasn't it? Very close, I think, yeah. How do you feel now? No, I feel all right now. Yeah, it's, it's eased off a little bit. It was a bit sore yesterday, but it's, it's not too bad. To show that all is now well, talkie chairman Lou Pope had a couple of presents for Bryn. The bone is an attempt to wean the animal off footballer's legs and the scarf is an attempt to show him whose side he should be on.